Master P and No Limit Records in 1998 would have a year for the history books. People tend to talk about 1998 when it comes to No Limit, but 1997 would be a relatively good year for No Limit Records also, but it would be the calm before the storm in a sense. In 1997, No Limit would release about 8 albums, but in 1998 alone, No Limit would drop over 20 freaking albums. Insane. No Limit Records sold nearly 15 million albums in 1998 alone. Master P earned an estimated $56.5 million, which landed him in the top 10 of the four magazines list of highest paid entertainers of the year. I got the $56 million from a XXL article, but I've seen numbers that are estimated to be higher. But in this video, I'll be going through the crazy year that Master P and No Limit Records had in 1998. I previously started out this series with DMX, and I said that 1998 was his year, which is true. He released two platinum albums in the same year in his debut album year while being alive. I think him and Master P, as far as 1998, have their claim, but today we're talking about Master P. But before I get more into the video, I would first like to thank you guys for coming to see this because you guys can be doing a million other things right now, but instead, you're here with me, and I appreciate that. If you guys like the content, you guys should like, comment, and subscribe to help the channel grow. Also, follow my Instagram too, that would be greatly appreciated. Comment down below your favorite album from this year, your favorite member from No Limit, favorite song, you know, all that good stuff. Also, let me know where you're tuning in from, represent where you're from. Shout out to all my people in Louisiana, I got family out there. But all right, man, without further ado, let's get to the video. Before we get into 1998, we have to briefly discuss the year previous, which was 1997. No Limit Records will release about 8 albums this year. Some of these albums were Mia X's album Unladylike which went gold, the True to the Game album which went double platinum, Mystical's album Unpredictable went platinum, and Master P's Ghetto D album went triple platinum. Speaking of the Ghetto D album, it had a song on it which like if you're watching this video you have probably already heard it already and it's make him say uh. But this song really, really established No Limit to a wider audience because the song was huge. It peaked at number 16 on the Billboard Hot 100. This would also be the year that Master P would have released his first feature film entitled I'm About It. 1997 would be a good year for the label, but I don't really think anybody expected No Limit to have such a monstrous year in 1998. You gotta think that there's only 12 months in a year and No Limit released over 20 albums in that year alone. I saw a comment from somebody on YouTube saying that they bought one of the albums from 1998 and in the CD packaging, they saw ads for multiple other No Limit albums that were coming soon, <laughs> which is just super crazy. Master P and No Limit in 1998 had a roster of soldiers and Master P being the colonel of the tank led the label to having one of the most insane years in rap history. Also, another thing to mention is Master P's famous record deal with Priority Records. Keep in mind that Master P and No Limit was selling millions of records independently, which is just crazy to think about and makes this year all the more special. No Limit had an 80-20 distribution deal with Priority Records, which allowed No Limit to keep ownership of all its masters. Eventually, the deal grew to be an 85-15 split. Basically, Priority was in charge of distribution, while No Limit pretty much did everything else. People talk about this deal a lot, but don't tend to mention how much work Master P and No Limit had to do on their end. There actually ended up being friction between Master P and Priority because because people at Priority was telling Master P that he couldn't put out all these records at the same time or even do movies, but he proved them all wrong. Quick disclaimer, I don't think that I'll cover every single album from 1998 extensively, mainly due to like, you know, time and stuff like that. That's really like a lot of things to go through with over 20 albums dropping this year, but yeah. But prior to this deal, Master P was offered a million dollars from Jimmy Iovine via Interscope Records and he turned this down despite still being in the projects and having less than $500 in his pocket. When he read the deal, he was seeing stuff about 
him not owning his name and stuff like that. And Master P said that he was going to go for a lunch. And Jimmy Iovine said that if Master P never came back, he would never get a deal in this town. Which, as we see today, that this turned out to be false. And Master P went on to you know do his thing but skip it to 1998 and the first no limit album to release in 1998 would be young bleeds album my balls and my word the album peaked at number 10 on the billboard 200 and topped the top r&b and hip-hop albums chart selling 210 thousand units in his first week and went on to be gold i actually really like this album cover i'm, I'm not even gonna lie to me it's kind of hard but the most notable song from this album is how you do that and like make him say uh it is one of the most popular songs from the no limit era the following month in february master p's brother silk the shocker released his sophomore album charge it to the game which peaked at number three on the billboard 200 and number one on the top r&b hip-hop albums chart selling 200 145,000 copies in his first week. This album was led by the singles Just Be Straight With Me and It Ain't My Fault. I would definitely like to say that my favorite tracks from this album are It Ain't My Fault, If I Don't Gotta, and I'm a Soldier. A quick thing about Silk, and I never get why people call him one of the worst rappers ever, I've definitely heard my fair share of bad rappers, and I'm by no means calling like you know silk like the best and stuff like that but i think silk just had like a unique delivery silk actually has some solid verses on some songs and his album charge it to the game is definitely the best work i've heard from him in my opinion the following month after charge it to the game came the release of c murder's debut studio album life or death the album peaked at number three on the Billboard 200 and at number one on the top R&B and hip hop albums chart, selling 197,000 copies in its first week. The singles for this album were A Second Chance and Make It Moves, but the song The Kick Though remains as probably the most popular song from this project. Pimp C has a phenomenal verse in that song, and I absolutely love that beat. Such a classic record. Where I'm From and Soldiers are some more of my favorites from this album as well. In April of 1998, the soundtrack to the movie I Got the Hook Up was released, and a month after that, the actual film was released. Now, if you haven't seen this film, then I highly suggest that you go watch it because it's truly hilarious. Master P really wanted to do a lot of things with No Limit, and making movies was one of them, and this movie actually did very well. It had a $3.5 million budget and brought in about $10.3 million at the box office. A lot of people from No Limit were in this movie in various roles. I actually forgot that this movie was released in 1998 and just really adds to the crazy year that Master P and No Limit had. But going back to April, and this is the month that the album The Game of Funk by the Sons of Funk released, but it didn't have the same success as other No Limit albums did that year. This album peaked at number 44 on the Billboard 200, but despite this, the songs I Got the Hook Up and Pushing Inside You did manage to chart on the Billboard Hot 100. But going back to May, and we would see Fiend release his first album on No Limit with There's One in Every Family. Fiend to me was spitting some of the best verses during No Limit at this time period. I really like his style and his energy when he's on the mic. This album ended up peaking at number 8 on the Billboard 200 and number 1 on the top R&B hip hop albums chart. Some of my favorites from this album are Who Got the Fire, Slangin' and Take My Pain. Literally a couple of weeks after this album came the release of Soulja Slim's debut album, Give It To Him Raw. The album peaked at number 13 on the Billboard 200 chart with first week sales of 82,000. The album was led by the singles From What I Was Told and Street Life. Listening to the song From What I Was Told is just so crazy because the song is amazing and Soulja Slim is just flowing all over that beat. He was really going in and it's really a shame what happened to Soldier Slim. Definitely a big rest in peace to him and all of the other former artists of No Limit. Really sad stuff, man. The next month in June, Master P would release his seventh studio album with MP The Last Don, which peaked at number one on the Billboard 200 chart, selling 495,000 copies in his first week. This album was marketed as Master P's retirement album, but we all know that this retirement didn't last long and he would actually return with his eighth studio album, Only God Can Judge Me, only a year later. 
something I had no clue even existed, is that Master P released another movie in 1998, aside from I Got the Hookup, which is the MP The Last Don short film. And then I found out another thing, and that's that Snoop Dogg, who was now on No Limit, released a short film this year too, named The Game of Life in 1998 as well. But the MP The Last Don album was a massive success, and one of, if not the biggest, for that year. Literally less than a week later, Kane and Abel released their sophomore No Limit album, Am I My Brother's Keeper, which peaked at number 5 on the Billboard 200 and number 1 on the Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart. It's just literally insane to think about how No Limit would have released albums so close together, literally sometimes days or even weeks apart, and they still managed to be successful and go on to become gold or platinum. The album Am I My Brother's Keeper was led by the single Time At The Time, which has success on the hip hop's chart. Weeks after the Am I My Brother's Keeper album, we would see the release of the Shell Shocked album by Mac, which charted at number 11 on the Billboard 200 and number 4 on the top R&B hip hop's albums chart. The album did have a single, which is Boss Chick and featured Mia X, who I feel like doesn't get the credit that she deserves because she's one of the dopest female rappers I've ever heard but that's a whole tangent I don't want to get on in this video. But not that long after the release of Shell Shocked, we will see the release of Snoop Dogg's debut No Limit album, The Game Is To Be Sold, Not To Be Told. I have a whole video about how Snoop Dogg came to No Limit because him leaving death row was a big deal. Snoop's time during No Limit really doesn't get talked about much and to some people they feel like musically this wasn't a good time period in his career but I definitely think that this time period of Snoop's career is very important because if it wasn't for Master P who knows what Snoop would have did after death row. Snoop didn't have a lot of money at the time and was going to do a verse for Mystical for only $3,500 but Master P added another zero on it and he eventually went on to pay millions to get Snoop out of his deal with Death Row to come to No Limit. The Game Is To Be Sold Not To Be Told did end up picking at number one on the Billboard 200, selling 520,000 copies in its first week, and in its second week, the album remained at the top of the Billboard 200, selling 246,000 copies. Looks like Master P definitely made a great investment with Snoop Dogg. This album was led by the single still a G thing, Wolf and Slow Down. This was actually the only album on No Limit to release in August that year. The next album that would have released would be Big Ed when he released The Assassin in September. The Assassin peaked at number 15 on the Billboard 200 and number 3 on the Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart. The Assassin was released at the top of September and the very next week Skullduggery would have released his sophomore No Limit album These Wicked Streets. This album peaked at number 21 on the Billboard 200 and number 4 on the Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart in the United States. By the way, big rest in peace to Skullduggery because while I was doing research and making this video, he did did, you know pass away and stuff like that so big rest in peace to skullduggery a week after these wicked streets released we would see the release of magic's debut studio album sky's the limit which peaked at number 15 on the billboard 200 and number three on the r&b hip-hop's albums chart selling 106,000 copies in its first week rest in peace to magic as well to cap off September, we would see the release of the Mean Green compilation album, which featured a majority of No Limits artists at the time. This actually was a success, with it peaking at number 9 on the Billboard 200 and number 6 on the Top R&B Hip Hop Albums chart, selling 89,000 copies in its first week. To start off October, we would see the only release from the group Prime Suspects with their album Guilty Till Proven Innocent. Compared to the other No Limit albums released this year, this one really didn't do like as well with it peaking at number 36 on the Billboard 200 and like it ended up selling 39,000 copies in its first week. We would see something similar happen to the group Gambino Family who only released like a couple of weeks later. The only difference is after the release of their debut album 
ghetto organized in 1998 they didn't drop another album for over like 20 years and it was only with a few members the album ghetto organized did peak at number 17 on the billboard 200 and at number three on the top r&b hip-hop albums chart selling 160,000 copies in its first week to start off november we would see the release of mia x's third studio album mama drama and this album was actually very successful it managed to peak at number seven on the billboard 200 and at number three on the top r&b hip-hop's albums chart it almost sold 100,000 copies in its first week the first single from the album was what you want to do and that actually peaked at number 43 on the billboard hot 100 and the second single ended up being i'm a shine just days after the release of mama drama we will see the release of the only studio album released by the group ghetto commission in which the album was called wise guys this album ended up peaking at number 59 on the billboard 200 and at number 12 on the top R&B hip hop's albums chart. We cap off November with the release of the sophomore album from the group Steady Mobbin with their album Black Mafia. This album, as said by the group members, was actually completed within a week and had been rushed to their hotel that they were staying at via Federal Express as soon as it was available a mere week before its release so that they can hear the album, which is Kind of like a crazy story but like before doing this video i actually had no clue about how successful their first album premeditated drama was and how it really helped out no limit records in 1997. this time around with their sophomore album black mafia it had only sold 21,000 copies in its first week and peaked at number 82 on the billboard 200. At the start of December, we would see the release of the debut studio album from Full Blooded named Memorial Day. It ended up peaking at number 112 on the Billboard 200, selling 5,000 copies in its first week. The very next week, we would see the release of the No Limit compilation album, No Limit Soldiers, We Can't Be Stopped, and that released selling 110,000 copies in its first week, peaking at number 19 on the Billboard 200. We continue to wind down the list with Mystical releasing his last album under no limit with ghetto fabulous this album peaked at number five on the billboard 200 and number one on the top r&b hip-hop albums chart selling 386,000 copies in its first week every time i look at this album i instantly think about the song i smell smoke and that song is just so crazy i love it man i love the beat the story, Mystical's delivery, the ending, I mean, everything about it is just so good. The last thing to come from No Limit in 1998 was the No Limit Soldier collection, and that pretty much caps off the year. This truly was an historic year for No Limit Records, and it makes it even more crazy because a lot of people regard 1998 as one of the best years in rap history. Some people already know that I'm a huge fan of Master P and his story. I'm not the one to really like idolize celebrities or anything like that but Master P definitely inspires me because he came from literally nothing and was told so many times that he couldn't do something and he continuously proved people wrong and truly showed that there's no limit to your success. I really feel like out of all of the rap moguls, we don't hear enough about Master P and No Limit Records. They really revolutionized what we all love today as this rap game. The very last thing I want to touch on is that in 1998, we would see Master P start his journey to the NBA, which I think in the future, I will make a full in-depth video on. Before that, I feel like I have to do the Allen Iverson video, but the story on how Master P almost made it into the NBA is actually very interesting. A man who was worth hundreds of millions decided that he wanted to live out his dream to make it into the NBA and show people everywhere that it doesn't matter how you start, it matters how you finish. Shout out to Master P and the No Limit Soldiers for making 1998 one of the best and most crazy years in rap history.